The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. This is a woman who has been betrayed. Uh, Dear Dr. Kenner, I have experienced infidelity as the betrayed one. It is one of the deepest emotional pains that I've ever experienced. The loss of trust But the loss of trust is worse, in my opinion, than the death of a loved one. In my opinion, it is nearly impossible to forgive one who has betrayed you. If there is to be any possible way to save the relationship, I think these three R's, excuse me, these six R's need to happen first. And here they are. I think this is very good, so that's why I'm passing it along. Two rational people reason. A deep commitment to rational resolution by, and here come uh, the other five. One is reason, and the second is reflection. A deep analysis of the causes of the betrayal. The second is responsibility, owning the harms committed. The third is remorse, sincere, contrite, expressional apology backed with demonstrable action, meaning really feeling the pain that you caused somebody and feeling remorseful for it, not just saying, I'm sorry for whatever I did, which is called a cheap apology. Uh, The fourth one is repair, immediately correcting the behavior to begin the retrust road. And the fifth one is rebuild, allowing plenty of time, if you feel it's worth the time, to heal and prove good intention. And she continues, My romantic relationship was not salvageable, and I think most are not able to regain the real romance. Oh, well, that's, that's a good observation. I think some couples mostly stay together for other reasons. I would appreciate your input to my thoughts. My best to you, Gail. Well, Gail, thank you. That was a pleasure to read because I think that you hit on key points. Um, I think you're right on. I think it takes a lot of mental effort, psychological effort, emotional effort to see if you want to continue with the person who betrayed you. Do you still love them? Is it mendable? What are the alternatives? Would you rather leave? Is it easy to leave? Do you have a family? Uh, Can you, as the person willing to mend the relationship collaboratively to your satisfaction? Is, is, are you partly responsible for the betrayal? For example, if you never wanted sex, maybe it, he was just at wit's end. Now, I don't think that's the case, but, uh, or maybe there are other problems in the relationship that were never resolved, but really being willing to understand and face what's going on openly. Um, and there will always be scarring. You're right. I, you know, I think that the biggest problem is that Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad and then Alan will be back. Romance. (laughs) I wish I knew more about what girls want from a relationship. Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance, a serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Huh. The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. The biggest problem is that sometimes when people have been betrayed, they're always feeling that someone will betray them in the future. And that, I think, is the most damaging. If you think that romance is impossible because you will always be betrayed, I think that that's more damaging than even the betrayal itself, because you're destroying the premise that romance is possible. So you want to repair that for yourself, even if you don't end up staying with the person. Um, You made a point, the loss of trust is worse, in my opinion, than the death of a loved one. And I I would recommend the book... uh, uh, for anybody else, you've already been through this, and for you too if you wanted, but Janice Abrams' spring book, Springs book, and it's called After the Affair. Oh, her last name is Spring, not Springs. Um, she said, when I was 15, oh, excuse me, she starts the whole book with some quotes, and I'll read two of them because I think they're poignant. This, she's not talking about herself here. When I was 15, I was raped. That was nothing compared to your affair. The rapist was a stranger. You, I thought, were my best friend. And here's the second quote. When I first uncovered your secret, I stopped feeling special to you. But on a deeper level, I lost trust in the world and in myself. 
unquote. So you never want that to happen to yourself. The, when you go through a betrayal, you definitely want some emotional support, you know, people in your life who love you and who haven't betrayed you. And you need to be your own best friend too. Um, you made one, one third point that I want to uh, address. And that's that um, you said that you think most couples stay together for other reasons. And in our book, the book that uh, Dr. Ed Locke and I wrote, The Selfish Path to Romance, How to Love with Passion and Reason, and selfish means self-valuing, self-esteem, self-nurturing, not mean rotten, <laughs> mean and rotten. Um, we talk about, in the appendix, we, we have, we have um, how to part ways and start over if you cease being soulmates. And we discuss reasons people stay together that have nothing to do with being romantically in love with one another. Maybe they feel guilty about breaking their vows, or maybe they feel guilty about leaving the partner. Maybe they're afraid of change, or there's too much emotional stress to deal with in divorcing. Or they could be afraid of being alone. They could be afraid of finances. I won't be able to make it on my own. Or what do we do? We have to live together because we can't make it as uh, solo, either one of us. Uh, they may be afraid of upsetting their family and friends. Oh, my God, you're going through a divorce. What am I going to say to the people at church or something? Um, there may be regrets. You might just be looking through old photo albums and say, how can I leave this relationship? And then the one that I think is the most powerful is, oh, my God, what will this do to our kids? If you do have kids, I highly recommend the, uh, the book by Florence Bienenfeld, which is helping your child through your divorce because it shows the world through the child's eyes. And I think it's very helpful for parents to see that they're not the only ones feeling damaged and betrayed. The kids are going through major trauma and that needs to be tended to. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. My show, as you know, is the rational basis of happiness. And that's, what does that mean? That means that you use your mind to guide your life in a way that helps you achieve the wonderful things that you want in life, whether it's friendships or uh, maybe a good career or a romantic relationship or maybe some fun hobbies that you we would love. Those are the things that make your life rich. And, and it may not even be financially, but just rich in terms of it being your life, not your parents' life, not what they wanted for you unless they coincide and they're the same things, but your unique life. And that's what you want to pursue. And you can't do it just by gut feeling. You've tried it before. You know where it leads you. And you can't do it just by wishing. You can wish all you want, but if you don't get off the couch and go out and look for a job, you're not going to get it. If you don't get off the couch and look for a romantic partner or try that hobby you're thinking of or make friends, they're not going to just materialize in your life. So it, the whole point of thinking is to guide your action to achieve your goals. Of course, we can use thinking to destroy our lives too, and that's not, that's not rational thinking though. For more Dr. Kenner podcast, go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and Dr. Edwin Locke. Always apologize if you have hurt or disappointed your partner. If you listen well, you'll discover sometimes that you have hurt your partner's feelings. This calls for an apology. Some people find it difficult to apologize because their self-esteem may be based on being perfect. Nothing is more guaranteed to make your partner feel unjustly treated and invisible than your refusal to acknowledge that you have hurt them. Active listening will go far to put your partner at ease. Your partner no longer has to work to make you understand. You have demonstrated that you have grasped what your partner is saying without necessarily agreeing with it. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com and you can buy The Selfish Path to Romance at amazon.com.